when the Denver Broncos made a blockbuster trade for the nine-time Pro Bowler Russell Wilson, it was considered the biggest trade of the decade. Denver had decided to push all of their chips into the middle and roll the dice on the former Seahawk. The Seattle Seahawks will get Drew Locke, I'm not joking, and several first round picks. Denver gets Russell Wilson. This is one of the most lopsided trades I've ever seen in my life. No intention of trading Russell Wilson has turned into trading Russell Wilson. What? Wow. Oh my God. Expecting him to be the difference that would push them to the top of the NFL. As it turns out, the complete opposite has happened. And the Denver Broncos have imploded since Russell Wilson's arrival. And I'd even go as far as to say that he is no longer worthy of the Hall of Fame due to the past two years of drama that he's caused. But to understand how we got to this point, we need to go back to his final days in Seattle, break them down, and explain exactly why the Russell Wilson experiment is over and why this is the worst trade in NFL history. Russ had been in Seattle since 2012, the year they drafted him in the third round, but things quickly fell apart in the buildup to the trade. After the Super Bowl in February of 2022, Russell Wilson, frustrated that he hadn't sniffed a Super Bowl in a long time, vented some of his frustrations. He saw Patrick Wilbur, Patrick Mahomes went through the Super Bowl. He said, hell, I go through that every week. He told me Patrick only had to do that one time. Just imagine me going through it. He's been sacked 394 times, Kim, almost mm -hmm. 400 times. Yep. Tom Brady in 21 seasons has been sacked 500 times. Yep. Russell wants to play long into his four, until his late 30s, early 40s, like Tom. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna make it like that. Russ had grown frustrated over multiple years and his relationship with Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks had slowly reached breaking point. Former teammate and Seahawks wide receiver Doug Baldwin believed the breakup was inevitable and all signs had pointed towards Russ believing he deserved better than an organization that was holding him back. And while many quarterbacks make it clear that they don't care about accomplishments or accolades, they just want what's best for the team, Russ was the exact opposite and he only cared about himself. He even managed to mention that he played as well as some of the greats like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Joe Montana. And he even spoke at times that he was the greatest football player of all time. There had been games in the later years of his career in Seattle in which Russ was out to prove a point. ESPN recalled a game against Atlanta in 2019, the year Lamar eventually won the award. But even then at points in that year, Russ was in the conversation for quite some time. In the first half of that Atlanta game, he made some insane plays. And then Pete Carroll took the ball out of his hands and leaned on the run game in the second half. According to reports, Russ was absolutely pissed at Pete Carroll. And yet again, his own goals were getting in the way of what's best for the team. A little more than a year later after his comments around the time of the Super Bowl, Wilson was traded to Denver. We have breaking news coming into Sports Center. Hey, we got breaking news. Blockbuster. Russell Wilson has been traded to the Denver Broncos. After weeks of negotiations in one of the largest trades in NFL history, the Seattle Seahawks and Denver Broncos have agreed to terms on a deal involving Super Bowl winning quarterback Russell Wilson. Oh! He and a fourth round pick headed to mile high, while two firsts, two seconds, a fifth, Drew Locke, Shelby Harris, and Noah Fant went the other way. I mean, Seattle absolutely cashed in on a stupid amount of picks for their former franchise quarterback. While Denver believed they were getting a great deal for them to finally make a Super Bowl run again. But then a nice little cherry on top, they doubled down and they gave him a huge extension. He penned his signature on a five year, $245 million extension, a contract that made him one of the highest paid quarterbacks in history with $165 million guaranteed. Russ had gotten exactly what he wanted out of Denver, but there was no disguising the meltdown with his former team. Like you said, I wonder what made Russell Wilson think that he can go in and get a potential Hall of Fame coach fired. Who runs the show there? Who runs the show in the whole situation? Like, 
<laughs> it was a marriage breakup for the ages, and it only was going to get messier. From the outside, many fans and analysts were blissfully unaware of the crumbling relationship between Wilson and the organization he had played for for a decade. But now that it was over, the ugliness of it was going public. As it so happened, Russell Wilson's very first game in a Broncos uniform happened to be on the road against the Seattle Seahawks. All eyes were on the game with the new head coach Nathaniel Hackett and his quarterback returning to Seattle, Washington for their very first action as a newly formed duo. Seattle had been absolutely written off and was deemed as one of the worst teams coming into this season following the execution of that trade. But what actually occurred in week one, nobody saw coming. Yeah, they wrote me off. I ain't right back though. That's the problem. I ain't right back. Let's go. Denver played dreadfully and embarrassed themselves on the field and on the sideline with a completely disjointed offense for four quarters. Eventually, Denver made a complete mess of their final drive, resulting in a long field goal attempt that came up short and Seattle claiming a 17 to 16 win. The Seahawks Twitter account mocked Wilson's Let's Ride comments and ex-teammates of his such as Richard Sherman, Doug Baldwin, and several others all made comments comments either on TV, podcasts, or social media about it. It's a one and no statement. You know what I mean? We come out here, everybody doubted us. Everyone made this about Russ. You feel me? We made this about the Seattle Seahawks. It was getting really ugly after the week one loss, but it was almost like this side of Russell Wilson nobody in the public had known about. He was being labeled a selfish player and his contract extension in Seattle had been condemned as the reason the legendary Legion of Boom fell apart, with Russ being the sole priority of the franchise. Now in Denver though, he would learn that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Nathaniel Hackett had been hired to run the show and had given Russ all the things he wanted and expected as the leader of the team. I, I mean, some of his requests were insane. Like he was requesting his own personal trainer in his own personal office at the team's facilities. Like. Nobody has ever done this except Russ. And it was these type of acts that were getting his own teammates to recognize that they were all like me first kind of comments that Russ was doing. But in all fairness, we really don't know how much of this was true, but when there's smoke, there typically is a fire. And one day in the future, once all these teammates and Russ is retired, we're gonna know the truth about what really happened and, and that day is just gonna be awesome. And don't get me wrong, had the Denver Broncos been winning and like doing well, I'm sure all of these weird Russell Wilson quirks and things he was requesting would just be overlooked and honestly probably teams would have tried to adapt them to their own quarterback. But they weren't winning, that was the problem. They didn't look good in the experiment the Broncos had thrown themselves into with the next two years years of their future on the line was falling apart at the seams. Last season, Denver had been tipped as a possible AFC West contender to challenge the Kansas City Chiefs, and many believed that this unit would break their six-year drought of no playoffs. Like, I mean, since Peyton Manning has won that Super Bowl for them, there has not been another signal caller or quarterback for the Broncos that has led them back into the playoffs, and Russ was expected to be that solution. Instead, though, the Broncos Broncos failed historically in several categories. In the 15 games Nathaniel Hackett was in charge of Denver, they scored only 15.5 points per game, which was their lowest scoring total since 1971. They were then converting on less than 29% of their third downs, dead last in the NFL, and had a record of 4-12 with the playoffs completely out of sight. I mean, they never once looked dangerous, and like they became the laughingstock of the NFL. I mean, Hackett was completely inept, and I don't even know how he got a job with the Jets this year. Like, that's a whole nother story for a different time, but he was horrible. And I guess because of him being so bad, that's why Russ got a pass last year, because he was inside of a terrible offense trying to make it work. But that's besides the point, because the facts were that this was the worst statistical season for Russell Wilson, and it was his first away from Seattle. The team that he once believed was holding him back, 
In 2022, he threw just 16 touchdown passes, a career low, in the first time he'd ever thrown for less than 20 in a single season. It was also 24 less than he had thrown just two seasons earlier when he threw for 40 in Seattle in the 2020 season. He had a career low completion percentage and just looked like a shell of himself despite believing what he needed was a new franchise. Suddenly, the draft picks and players Denver had traded away for Russ, along with the $245 million contract they gave him, was looking like a very, very bad idea. Nathaniel Hackett was fired, the team was completely unmotivated, and all signs pointed towards Russell Wilson being one of the major issues at the very heart of it. And in short, many people believe that Russ was just done, like his career was cooked at this point. Like he was looking like a washed up quarterback that looked completely lost and wasn't being coddled by the Seahawks like he was normally used to being coddled by. Like, sure, he was a nine-time Pro Bowler, but did he even really believe in himself? Denver only had one way to find out, and that meant dipping even further into their draft capital to get him one of the very best coaches of a generation. Sean Payton had retired amidst his contract with the New Orleans Saints, but had expressed interest in returning to the NFL to take on another challenge. And the challenge is exactly what he got in Denver, but the franchise would still have to trade for him since he was still under contract technically in New Orleans. The fee was a 2023 first rounder and a 2024 second, and Denver would once again roll the dice with Russ at quarterback. I mean, at this point, it was clear that they had lost their gamble on the Russell Wilson trade, but they couldn't just bow out of it after one year. Like, they had to at least try to make it work. And who better yet to at least try to make it work than a Super Bowl champion coach in Sean Payton. He had won a Super Bowl with Drew Brees in New Orleans and came with a reputation as a no-nonsense head coach that would let you hear it if you weren't following his guy. And he sure as hell did that when he very quickly put an end to the rumors that Russ would have his trainer in the building and scoffed at the idea that Wilson might even have his own personal office within the Broncos facility. So after this move was made, kind of everybody was like, wow, okay, the, the Broncos mean business. Sean Payton's going to turn around and get Russell Wilson to kind of like, you know, be a real quarterback again. Unlike that completely unexperienced idiot in Nathaniel Hackett. So things should be better, right? Right? As the season began, that was not the case. Denver once again struggled, getting a 70 burger dropped on their head by the Miami Dolphins and opening the season one and three. Things only got significantly worse though when they lost to a struggling New York Jets team in what a revenge game for Nathaniel Hackett was, who was the offensive coordinator for the Jets now. I mean, Sean Payton had made some outlandish comments about the way Hackett had run the Broncos in 2022, and the Jets made a point of ridiculing those comments after their win. Like, I mean, Denver was just the laughing stock of the NFL. And I mean, Russ looked nothing like he did in Seattle. He wasn't making any plays. He looked terrible still. Like, even as an older quarterback, he just cannot evade tacklers like he used to, where he would just scramble around and then just chuck it up and Tyler Lockett would be standing there. Like, that's not happening anymore. He's not that guy anymore. And it's starting to show. And I mean, even as things improved this year, they weren't winning games because of him. Denver did turn things around slightly with Peyton helping them back to a respectable record late in the year. However, it became apparent with just two games left on the schedule that Russ wasn't going to be the guy Sean Peyton wanted to lead his team. Russ was benched with two games to go and the Broncos were turned to the journeyman Jared Stidham, who had started just two games for the Raiders last year late in the season. Following the benching, more sour stories of Russ's relationship with the franchise he played for began to surface. He was asked after the Kansas City game to alter his contract and remove the injury guarantee that he had originally been agreed to. The franchise threatened to bench him for the remainder of the season if he declined, but Russ stood firm and refused to entertain such negotiations. Denver did take their time imposing that threat, but they ended up finally going through with it. And as the season finishes up today, their relationship honestly is still up in the air. Like to me, it seems clear that Sean Payton in the Broncos front office is ready to move on from Russell Wilson. Like, I think that means even if that means paying out his guaranteed money, they kind of just want to usher him out the front door and kick him on the way out. Should the Broncos cut Russ post June 1st, he would count over $35 million in dead cap in 2024 and nearly $50 million in 2024. 
It's $85 million against the Broncos cap over the next two seasons and will significantly hinder the way they're able to build their roster, but things have gotten so bad, it seems the franchise is ready to pull that trigger. I think it's crazy to think right now that in 2023, we're about to see Russell Wilson get cut from his team. On top of that, he'll get signed to a team probably, but even then he might only be a backup. Like that was his last big contract. He will never see another contract of that size again in his career. Unfortunately, Russell Wilson's reputation has been clouded. And even if he doesn't get a job, many teams might just turn away because they don't want that drama on their team. Sadly, it seems like it might be over for Russell Wilson. But I want to know what you guys think. Does he get another start somewhere else, like maybe Vegas or I think maybe with the Falcons possibly? Or is he doomed to be a backup for the rest of his probably three or four years left in the league? Let me know down in the comment section below and I will catch you guys in the next one.